All right, we're continuing looking at functions. And one of the main ideas in college algebra is the domain and the reign of a function. Domain and range of a function. Okay, so let's spend a little more time talking about that. Now, the domain I mentioned briefly is what can you put into the machine? And the range is what you get out. So typically, this is x's and y's. So the x's are usually the domain, and the y is the range. Now, this is just saying the same thing I just said. Here's our machine. The domain are the things that go in the machine. I like to think of it as the conveyor belt with the little machine there. Things are going in from the domain, coming out as the range. Now, if you've done interval notation before, if you've done inequalities, you've done interval notation. Um, I can't remember where it falls in the course, but let me give you a refresher if you don't remember. So let me do it here, because that other screen doesn't really make sense. If I were looking on a number line that x is greater than 3, I could draw that. And maybe in high school what you did was you did an open circle and then you drew this line. Well, or wherever you've had this course, or if you've had it before, maybe even in middle school. So you have the open circle, you go this way. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a parenthesis, And it means I want to start at 3, but I don't want to include it, because there was no equal sign on this inequality. So now, I'm going to turn this into interval notation, and I'm going to read. I read left to right. So when I'm reading these words up here, I'm going left to right. Well, it's the same with an, in, uh, with, uh, an interval notation. I'm going to go up the number line. So I'm going to go to 3, and then I'm going to go on forever. Now, I can never get to forever, so I'm going to give that a parenthesis as well. Now, let's try another one. Suppose I had this. I'm going to mark negative 4. Now, this time, I want neg the negative 4, so I'm going to give that a bracket. And I want everything down. So parenthesis means no equal sign. A bracket means an equal sign. So we read going left to right. So I'm now starting at negative infinity, and I'm going to negative 4. I got a bracket because I wanted negative 4, had the equal sign, and a parenthesis again because I can never reach negative infinity. And then you could have something in between. Like suppose we had something that was going between negative 4 and 3. We just wanted the region between. Well, let me literally, well, they're a little different. Suppose I didn't want negative 4, so I'd give that a parenthesis, but I did want 3. Now, all the examples will show this again, so if that was too quick for you, let me just keep going. I think this, this table is true, but I don't think it's very easy to read, but all the possibilities are right there. Okay, so now if I wanted the domain of this function, that's the x's. All I need to do is list all the x's, and if I want the range, which I guess they're not asking, it would just be all the y's. Now, the domain of a function is an interesting thing. It's really easy to see with the picture, which we'll do at the end. But we are just looking to see if there are any possible values that I could put in for x that would break the function. And what I mean by break is the laws of mathematics would be broken. Now, I'm trying to think if there are any exceptions, but what we're going to see is, let me show you these two. These are the two that we're primarily looking at in this course. I'm sure there are others, but I can't think of anything at the top of my head. Do you see that if x turns out to be 0, that's supposed to be an equal sign, if x turned out to be 0, the laws of math would break you're not allowed to have a zero in the denominator. So this function is not allowed to be zero. And if you look at a square root, you're not allowed to have negative numbers under there. So you're fine as long as x is, it's allowed to be zero or bigger, but it can't be less. So there are ways that a function could break if you put in certain values. So what do you do? You don't put those values in the machine because you don't want the machine to break. So let's look at this first one, x squared. There's nothing that would break this. There's nothing that would break the laws of math. And so everything is allowed to go in this machine, and the domain 
in interval notation, that means everything, negative infinity to infinity. Now, I'm going to just take you through this one. This does not have either of the problems that we saw. This does not have denominator. This does not have a square root. And actually, this cannot break either. You could put in any values of x you want. So I would say the domain is this. It's all real numbers. That's supposed to be that infinity sign. Now, things have changed here. We have a denominator that is not allowed to be 0, or else it would break. And what's interesting about it, that's all I care about. The problem is down here. What's on the top has nothing to do with it. It is not, none of this is going to break. I don't even care. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say 2 minus x is not allowed to be 0. So that's supposed to be an equal sign with a slash through it. I'm going to see which values it is not allowed to be. And I'm going to just send the x to the other side, and I'm going to find out x is not allowed to be 2. So I don't care what number you put in for x, but you can't put 2 in my machine, because if you do, you're going to break my machine. And look how clever this is in interval notation. This is a union, which means I want either one of these. I'm okay with either one. Or if you've done compound inequalities, it looks like an or or a u. So this is what it means. I'm happy with every number but 2. Well, in interval notation, I'm skipping over 2 because there's a parenthesis there and parenthesis there. I'm jumping over the 2. So the only number that I'm not interested in is, is 2. You try one on your own. OK. You always pause the video if you want to try it. If not, you can just watch me do it. 2x minus 1 is not 0. So I'm not allowed to have 1 half. So I, ho I hope you tried. <clears throat> and you got this. So every number is acceptable. My domain is every number except one half. It's not allowed to be one half, so I jumped over it. Now let's get to the square root. So square roots, even roots, I don't think we're going to do fourth roots or whatever, but so square roots will be the primary, primary place. I cannot let whatever is underneath this house be a negative number. It can be zero, but it can't be a negative. Now, one small confusing thing here is I'm going to work this again. But So I'm going to work this to find the values that are allowed. In the denominator type of problem, I worked it so I could find what's not allowed. This time, I'm seeing what is allowed. I can't really think of a better way to do it. I, I, I know it's a little confusing, but I, I think that's the way you got to go. So. You know, just for old time's sake, I'm going to show it to you this way because I want you to see something. I send the 7 over. Now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1, and it's going to flip that inequality around. Okay, so in interval notation, I want all the x's less than or equal to 7. If you need the number line, draw it. It's totally fine. But I'm going to go that this, in my head, I see this is going negative infinity to 7. There's an equal sign. So I got a bracket. So that's my, I like it written like this, where you've got the domain is this. That's supposed to be a parenthesis. OK, pause the video if you want to try. Give this one a shot. 5 plus 2x has to be greater than or equal to 0. All right, so it is possible. You just divide this by 2. Now we want x is to be greater than or equal to 5 halves. No big deal. That's just 2 and a half. So these are the possible values. These are the ones that are allowed. So in interval notation, I want 5 halves. And I'm going to go on forever. And that's my domain. OK, set builder notation, it gets mentioned in a lot of books. Most tests are usually just the interval notation. But this is set builder notation. It just means all the x's such that my x's are between these two. Or you could have all the x's such that x is greater than 2. 
or whatever. You can put whatever your inequalities are right in there. If this first part just means all the x is such that. That's all it is. Uh, okay, I don't think this is very important. I didn't know this was in here. So this is just some more interval notation with these dots. I, I don't think it's very important. This is just, do you see that saying that you want between 1 and 3? And you're unioning that with 5 to infinity, but you don't want the 5. They, got, they have the open circle. Now, this is what's important out of this section. I want to look at the domain and the range. Now, it's very easy to find off the graph. And what you do, like in the classroom, I use a ruler and I like walk up. The domain are the x's, okay? So to find the domain, I'm going to take my ruler, point it up and down, and I'm going to move it across the x-axis. And when it hits something, that is going to be part of the domain. So it's the x's. I'm just moving up the x's. If I move my ruler over this line, I first get to something at negative 3. But it's an open circle. So I'm going to start at negative 3, but I don't want to include it. Now I keep moving my ruler and I'm hitting graph. I'm hitting graph somewhere, anywhere with my ruler until I get to 1. And then it stops. Now where I'm hitting is a filled in circle. So I get a bracket. Now if I kept going with my ruler, I don't hit any more graph anywhere else. So I'm done. To find the range, you're going to do the same thing. But instead, you're going to take your ruler, or your pencil, and you're going to go up the y line. We're going increasing because we're going from smaller to larger numbers. I get to negative 4 and I start hitting something. And it's a filled in dot, so it's going to get a bracket. Now, I consider that over here, I'm hitting the line here. It doesn't have a dot, but that would be filled in as well. That would be a bracket. Now I'm moving my ruler up, up. I'm hitting graph somewhere until I get here. And when I get here, I stop. And I've got an open circle there. This one's a little confusing. I have an open circle there, but I think this is touching right here at zero. So I'm going to zero. And I'm going to give it a bracket because I think this part is filled in. Let's see if we have some others. Uh, those are the same ones. Yeah, they don't have a lot of examples. So let me just show you one more. This isn't a great one. I'm taking my ruler. I'm going up, up and down, going up the x-axis. I'm trying to find my domain. Going up the x-axis, and I start hitting something with my ruler. It should be straight up and down at 1950. And that is filled in, so that's a bracket. And I'm going to keep going until what appears to me my ruler would stop hitting the graph at the year 2000. And it appears to me that's also is right where it stops. We're going to include it, so I get a bracket. Now my range, I'm going to start my ruler going up the y-axis. Now there would be nothing until I get to what appears to be about 48. And I am including it. My ruler keeps going, keeps hitting graph somewhere until I get, I don't know, just right above 90. We'll call that 92. It's filled in, and we'll give that a bracket. Okay, that's not a ton of examples of those, and it can be kind of confusing. Just understand domain is when you're moving your ruler and hitting graph as you go up the x's. Range is when you got your ruler and you're moving up the y's, and you are hitting graph. Okay, so negative 4 to 0 for the range here. The domain would be negative 3 parentheses because you just open circle until you get to 1. Okay, so there's an introduction to domain and range. And uh, it's a pretty important idea, so hopefully they get you started.